The uh, playoff era has not uh, littered us with a ton of great games, but we got one last week with uh, Clemson and Ohio State. We've had a few championship games, and it looks like we've got another one lined up with Clemson defending a national championship from last year against the LSU Tigers and uh, their throttling of Oklahoma. We got uh, guys from Pot of Gold on the line, Mike and Brett, to talk up the LSU side. How are you guys doing today? Doing great this morning. Yeah, it's a good morning. Just ready. I wish the game was coming up this week, but we have another week to to wait and talk about it. So I guess that's good for us. Yeah. Have you heard anything about why that change was made? I'm trying to think if that was, I think that was last year was the first year that they waited a full other week. So we're looking at 16 days between games. I don't, it has something to do with the NFL playoff situation. I guess. Yeah. I don't really know. I think it was originally uh, a couple of years ago. I know the, the playoffs are supposed to be on New Year's Eve, right? Or mm. it, yeah. And yeah. so there, the attendance and um, the numbers were kind of down on, on people actually viewing the playoffs. So they wanted to push it a little bit further. Um, and I think that's what happened with that spread there uh, with this large gap that we have now waiting for the national championship. It almost seems like it fits better, though, because it's like, hey, you have like three or four weeks to prepare for your semifinal game. Oh, and then the bigger game, you turn around and have to play like next week. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's good. Get both teams as healthy as possible to try to put on the best show. I hear you. Uh, based on my background, I should probably be telling you guys why that decision was made. But uh, some of the yeah, some of those comments the that you were making, you're bringing some uh, some of those points to light. And uh, yeah, the the playoff definitely suffered from that first uh, New Year's Eve uh, rendition, I believe, in 2015 from a television rating standpoint. So some changes had to be made. Uh, talking LSU, um, interesting that of course Clemson had not faced anything close to Ohio State. Not uh, surprisingly, the Buckeyes put up uh, season highs for Clemson's defense. Yardage passing, rushing, total yardage at 516, although they played great red zone defense, or maybe the Buckeyes had more to do with that uh, deficiency than Clemson's defense making stops. Um, when you look at Ohio State's offense and taking in a great semifinal game, but look at uh, LSU and what what they bring to the table, there are obvious similarities. What differences would you make there? I mean, one of the bigger things that I saw watching that game is Ohio State's definitely going to go in more of those like pro style sets, bring in some tight ends and, and things like that, where LSU is just kind of going to go there four and five wide. And I think they're going to use tempo more than they have maybe at some spots in this year. But uh, Ohio State did just such a good job of running the ball and, and making the blocks and letting Dobbins find a crease to just get up the field. And, and they kind of they showed a little bit of the the linebackers, you know, following not using their proper assignments and tracking with their eyes and getting beat on some big plays. Yeah, I, I think Ohio State. I mean, they they could have easily <clears throat> had the game locked up in the first half. Um, they kind of let it slip away from them a little bit, um, especially when Dobbins uh, went down with that ankle injury. I think that LSU is a lot deeper um, offensively, where we're not uh, we're not just backed in a corner on hey, if our running back goes down, then man, we're kind of screwed here. Uh, we have um, a lot of quality depth there, um, but we also are very versatile. Where we actually attack the defense, whatever they're giving us, we have a playmaker to attack that space that they're giving us, and we execute that flawlessly. I say we uh, very yeah, loosely here, we. but uh, no, I, I think LSU's plan of attack against Clemson um, is not going to be a, a, a mirror image of what Ohio State did, I think they're going to execute that um, tremendously more. It, you know, guys, I am all in the camp of we can use the, uh, whether it be the fan base or analysts, <laughs> podcasters, we can go the we route. Uh, it's if so much easier. If we don't exist, if we don't support it on TV and in the stands, it doesn't exist. So they're, they're playing on some sandlot somewhere and nobody's paying attention. So uh, have at it. I, I always go that route myself. <laughs> We got uh, Mike and Brett on the line. You can catch them on uh, Pot of Gold. And before we continue, guys, I want to let uh, everybody know where they can find you because uh, you deliver great stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, all that fun stuff at, at Pot of Gold. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff on Twitter. That's where most of our interaction is. Uh, you can go to our YouTube page. We're starting to put more videos up there. But yeah, I mean, just really anywhere you listen to podcasts, we do about a, an hour twice a week and just have fun talking football. So the first analysis on this game is uh, something you guys alluded to, obviously. It's Burrow versus the Clemson pass defense. That's what everybody gravitates to, number one. You guys started to hit on 
what I wanted to hit on, and that's that J.K. Dobbins gashed this defense, he and the offensive line. I can't really make a strong comparison of offensive lines because they're both really good. I don't know that either one's great, but they're both top five to ten in the nation. I would put them in that category. But to compare the LSU backs versus Dobbins and whether there's that capability to be that good in the running game versus Clemson's defense. Yeah, I think what you're really going to see is LSU plays the numbers games. If they feel like they have the numbers in the box or a favorable matchup, they're going to run the ball. And if not, they're going to throw it. I mean, they really do try to just take what the defense gives them as as much of a cliche as it sounds. I mean, if they want to stack the box, then we're just going to let Joe throw to some of these amazing wide receivers. But if they're going to try to play back in coverage, I mean – Clyde's going to shake you and break you down and miss, you know, break a bunch of tackles and off to the races. I could see him doing, making some big, big runs in this game. Yeah. I I think the big storyline, obviously, that everyone's going to be talking about is the Heisman Trophy winner, Joe Burrow, and and Trevor Lawrence going back and forth and and this big passing duel. I I don't see it that way. I I truly think Clyde Edwards Alaire is going to have a field day against Clemson. Um, And I I think as well for Clemson, I think Travis Etienne is going to be their bell cow uh, for this game. I don't think it's all going to be on Lawrence. I don't think it's all going to be on Burrow. If it is a close game in the second half, um, I I can see the quarterbacks taking over. But very early, I think this is going to be a strong running game uh, from both sides. So when we flip it uh, in terms of sides of the football, you hit on again. Man, you guys produced my show for me. Uh, You guys uh, started to talk about Etienne. Uh, we're talking about a back who set an all-time, definitely an all-time ACC record, I believe, all-time record in yards per carry. He's like an almost a nine yards per carry yeah. rush guy in his career. Like Very good. Something. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State held him to 36 yards on 10 or 11 carries. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they utilized him out of the backfield as a receiver. Um, so certainly there's got to be a lot of discussion in the LSU um, sanctum about, okay, what do we do here? Uh, they're going to change up on us. Uh, what, what do we shut down here? Uh, the, the pass game or the run game in regards to uh, Etienne. Uh, just your thoughts about the LSU defense in that regard. And then also what happened to this defense the last few weeks and into the playoff game that was such a stark contrast to what we saw the first eight or nine games of the season. Well, I, I think Travis Etienne is a guy um, that LSU fans are, are very familiar with. He's a kid from Jennings, Louisiana. Uh, he was recruited by LSU very late in the game and, and kind of went to Clemson. A lot of people feel out of out of spite um, to kind of stick it to LSU. Of you, You're not going to recruit me or, or offer me to the last minute. I'm not going to go play for you. Um, so, well, um, anyway – uh, sorry, we had a little background noise there. Uh, but he is a guy that we've been following for a long time that is extremely impressive. He, like you said, you rambled off the stats there. Etienne is an incredible running back that we both talked about, thought was going to be in the Heisman contention uh, late in the year. Anyway, uh, moving forward, Dave Aranda's defense, the way he adjusts um, is elite. And the way they attack um, – in space is elite. I think what he can do against Etienne, what he can do against Lawrence is something that we've seen the last five or six weeks from a Dave Aranda defense where they progress as the season closes out. Um, and it's not just adjusting in game. It's adjusting as the season goes on. I think Dave Aranda has done a great job of that. It'll be super interesting to see what Dave Aranda does, because if you go back and watch the Ohio State game, they sat there in their single high safety and let their really good corners play man up and say, we're not going to get beat. Let them catch it in front of you and tackle. And what Clemson did to counteract that to get the numbers back in their favor was they ran Lawrence and used Etienne as a blocker. So I'm really kind of curious to see how that's going to play out if the game plan for them is to run Lawrence more. You know, LSU runs three safeties on the field a decent amount of the time. And I don't know, it'll just be a really fun matchup. I mean, look, everyone knows Clemson has weapons. They have probably as many weapons as LSU does. So it's, you know, which defense can scheme, can Brent Venables scheme to confuse uh, Joe Burrow, can Dave Aranda dial up some blitzes with some of these young guys to get after Lawrence and put him on the ground. And just to go off of LSU's defense, they've definitely improved, but you've seen so many little stretches of this team showing how talented they are and what they can do. It was when games got a little out of hand or maybe teams threw a little wrinkle at them they weren't ready for that 
points were scored and you're like, oh man, this defense isn't that great. But you're just really starting to see these guys really put it all into every possession. Caleb Von Chason has yeah, ascended to, to Chase Young levels. You know, I know Chase Young was the hype of everything, but you watch Chase on in these last three games, he's impacting just about every time the quarterback drops back. And does does Clemson block that? Can they do it? I don't know. I think it's going to be a really fun matchup. I could see this being this weird lower scoring game than you would imagine, or I could see these offenses scoring every time they touch the ball. It's just really what athletes show up ready to play. No, and I agree with you, Brett, um, how you alluded to Brent Venables and Dave Aranda both being just kind of defensive masterminds here. There's a reason that Venables has been so successful for so long at Clemson. Um, the continuity there is tremendous. Now, with Dave Aranda at the same time, um, he'll out scheme you. And just like Venables, they might not be the most talented team this year on defense, talent wise, like they were the year before, especially on the defensive front. But he finds ways to confuse the offense. It just so happens this year, I feel like he's running into a buzzsaw with LSU. I don't think much is going to confuse this group. You know, the portion of this game that uh, few ever talk about, not just this game, any big game is special teams. Uh, that turned out to be a big factor in Clemson, Ohio State for a number of reasons, penalties yeah. and so forth. Uh, for your game, I don't know what turned out to be important in your game. After three plays, I thought, okay, this is the game I expected to see. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> but but in regards to special teams, uh, my goodness. So Clemson never factors in heavily in special teams. If you look back on their playoff run, if you if you're a believer in metrics, they they rank very low in special teams every year. Coverage, returns, field goal kicking's never stellar. Uh, what what do you guys bring to the table in regards to special teams? How tight's it been? I mean, a guy like Derek Stingley comes in, and I don't know if ever a true freshman has just been given the punt returning duties at LSU. And he's a guy that is very electric when he gets the ball, but he really hasn't had a ton of opportunities this year. I don't know if it's teams that are kind of scheming away from it or it's just the, the coverage is there. But also at the same time, I assume that they're telling this kid like, hey, no mistakes, give the ball to our offense. So I don't know that there's going to be this massive swing on special teams. You know, LSU puts Clyde back there on kickoff returns and Clemson puts Etienne back there on Clint on kickoff returns. You would think they're going to tr yeah. they want to try to swing the game in that manner. I'm just I'm not sure that that's where it's going to play. Avery Adkins and Cade York, um, two guys that that really can can kick the heck out of a football. Um, I, I think we're always out of the end zone. We very which every team usually is. Uh, but we've been very consistent with that, with limiting returns. Um, we have a young kicker. Uh, last season, we had Cole Tracy, who was money. I mean, he could kick from anywhere. He was extremely accurate. Uh, this season, we have a true freshman, Cade York, come in. And he hasn't really needed to make a lot of big-time field goals. But we have tried to implement um, his development within some of these big games, like the SEC Championship. We put him in a few times, hit a couple, was it 50-yarders? Um, I think he's missed one in the last two games right. also. Like so each. developing his confidence was huge for us, uh, especially when you're putting up 50, 60 points a game. You need to have some form of development for a young kicker. And I think we've done that. Um, so, yeah, we Stingley is a great return man. I I think uh, as far as special teams goes, I think we gave up that big return uh, to Alabama uh, when, when Waddle took off. But, I mean, he's done that to everybody. Yeah. Other than that, we've been pretty successful in the special teams game. Um, Zach Von Rosenberg's like 87 yeah. years old back there kicking. So, right, I mean, exactly. we got a seasoned veteran <clears throat> at punter, so we should be fine. And, we, ha I mean, the, the depth at LSU is insane that you've got four- and five-star kids uh, waiting to start on offense or defense that are just shining on special teams. So, um, should be an exi exciting game from that standpoint as well. Because as the Rose Bowl reminded us the other day, you could have all these lead athletes, you can prepare, you can train, you can lift weights, you can do all these things. Then you can have a punter who just kind of whiffs on the, yeah. just throwing the, the, the snap up to himself, just this, his own drop for the kick. And it cost Wisconsin a touchdown in the game at the Rose Bowl.